Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 16, episode 8. Overall, I feel like OC is giving us a solid season, but I just don't feel like this cast is a cohesive cast. I feel like quite a few of these ladies can go. You already know who I'm knocking out off rip. Gina and Emily can get their walking papers immediately. Y'all know how I feel about Noella. I think that she's exhausting. I think that Dr. Jen also needs to be handed the pink slip as well. Because while her marriage is falling apart before her own eyes, we've seen this same story many times and I'm just not interested. Her personality doesn't bring a whole lot. I think that Heather and Shannon just need a better group. But without further ado, let's just jump right on into this recap because we don't have a minute to spare. We start this episode off, all the ladies are still at dinner and Noella, Gina, and Emily come back to the table and Shannon's trying to make Noella feel better. And she's like, hey, Noella, we have a nice chill tequila shot for you. Because remember how in the last episode, Noella didn't want to take a shot because the tequila was too warm. And I was like, really, girl? It's a tequila shot. Just drink it. But again, I digress. So now we see a short scene with all the guys at dinner. And Terry is asking Travis if he plans on getting married to Gina. So Travis is kind of, you know, stammering and stuttering. He's not really answering the question. And I said, Terry, you know good and well that Travis doesn't have any money to be thinking about marrying anybody, okay? <laughs> I said, what kind of ring is he gonna propose to Gina with? Something out of the gumball machine? Like, stop. <laughs> and did you guys notice how Shane was just sitting there at that guy's night? I was like, I just don't understand what Emily saw in him besides him coming from some money. Because Shane has no personality. He looks so dead in the eyes every time you see him. I'm like, damn, can you crack a smile, something? He always looks like he would just rather be somewhere else. I don't know, but again, I just don't understand how that union worked. So now we flip back to the ladies at their dinner in Mexico, and now they're getting drunk and asking some questions. I think Emily and Gina ask if Shannon would ever have a threesome with her boyfriend. So Shannon says, nope, like me and my boyfriend do not believe in inviting third parties because it's just a whole mess. I just felt like that was a very stupid question because you can look at Shannon and see that she is not on that type of time at all. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't get any experimental vibes from her at all. So I'm like, y'all are wasting your breath asking if Shannon would ever partake in a threesome. So now Gina starts asking Shannon if she and John plan to get married. And Shannon's like, I mean, we've talked about it. We made a pact that once my twins leave for college, then we'll move in together and buy a house together. I was like, I don't know why Gina is questioning anybody about their relationship. I would have asked Gina, girl, why are you all in my business? When is your boyfriend gonna get some money? Okay, like, why are you worried about me? Worrying about what's going on in your home. <laughs> I'd be asking Gina every time we had to film a scene together, girl, how'd you get on this show? <laughs> so now Noella interjects and she's talking about how Shannon's twins are her soulmates. And Shannon's like, oh, actually my kids would love you. So Noella makes a joke that her kids would call her Auntie Psycho Pants. And I was like, girl, that's an understatement. But anyhow, <laughs> y'all, I know that quite a few of y'all like Noella, but I'm sorry. Her attitude is just not it for me. So y'all going to have to just deal. <laughs> We're not always going to love the same people, okay? But anyhow, everybody at the table is getting annoyed because Noella keeps making the conversation about her. So Gina even says in her confessional that Noella needs to stop dominating the conversation and turning it back to herself. Now, I've told you guys in several recaps that I find Noella to be very self-centered. And that is a trait that I just really loathe in people. I am just a big believer in letting people have their moment. 
Like, it's not always about you. And that's okay. And you need to learn how to adjust when the spotlight or the attention is not on you. And Noella has a very bad habit of turning the conversation back to herself. So now Heather and Dr. Jen get up to go to the bathroom, and then here's where all hell breaks loose. Noella sits next to Shannon, and they're talking. And now Gina and Emily start, like, fake humming and meditating. And they're kind of being a little bit annoying. And so Noella is getting annoyed, like, really? Like, you guys are acting so childish. So because Noella called them both children, Gina and Emily get up from the table, and they're like, you know what? Shout out to everybody. I have fun. We'll be back at the villa because don't call us kids. So child, Shannon starts screaming and she's like, what's going on? Like y'all get back here right now. And so she goes to follow Gina and Emily to bring them back to the table. So Gina and Emily get back to the table. And so Gina and Noella are still arguing. So Gina says, do you want me to tell you that you're perfect all the time? Because you're not. So child, they're still going at it. Heather and Dr. Jen are back at the table and they're like, wait, what's going on? And I said, Gina, this is what you get because you wanted Noella to come on this trip so badly and now you and her are getting into it. You should have left well enough alone and had Noella to stay in Orange County while you guys were in Cabo. Now we move on to the next scene. It's the next morning and Noella says that she couldn't sleep last night because she's still upset at the fact that she got into an argument with Gina and she feels like a ball of anxiety. So now all the ladies are split up in two groups for the activities for that day. And we see Shannon, Heather, and Dr. Jen together, and Emily, Gina, and Noella together. So Noella, Gina, and Emily are on their way to a sweat lodge. And a sweat lodge is going to be where they cleanse their souls. So child, we see the three of them go inside the hut. And it's like 102 degrees inside of there. And when I tell you, you could hear them all just sobbing. Gina says that she feels like a wave of sadness has come over her. And she keeps saying that she can feel Emily and Noella's sadness because they were sitting next to each other. So again, I was like, I don't understand how that could be fun for anybody. I would have been like, you know what? I'm going to sit over there while you guys do that because I would not be participating in that. I go on vacation to have fun. I'm not trying to bring up or relive any past trauma. No, thank you. No. Uh -uh. So we hear Emily and Gina calling for production to help and get Noella out of there because she is about to pass out. She's sobbing. And so we see them carry Noella out. She's on a bed and she keeps saying that she's sorry. And they're all like, no, like nothing to be sorry about. Like, we want to make sure that you're okay. So while production and the employees at the sweat lodge are making sure that Noelle is okay, Emily and Gina go off to one of the tables and they're like, the sweat lodge was a very surreal experience and how they could feel each other's sadness. Now Noella joins them at the table and she's like, I am so mortified and embarrassed. Like, again, I'm so sorry. They're like, no, don't apologize. Like, we just want to make sure that you're okay. She says that she's fine. And then Emily says, let's go back to the villa, have some margaritas on the beach and just chill out. Child, we see them back at the villa and they're all in the bed sleeping. <laughs> now we see Heather, Shannon, Dr. Jen and Heather's friend Tawny are hanging out and they're checking out some beautiful homes because remember that Heather and Terry want to build a home in Cabo. So we see the first house is 26,000 square feet. I think they said it was what, $13 million? What a gorgeous home, a stunning library. The pool is gorgeous, ocean views, like you can't beat it. I could not stop laughing at Shannon making those snide remarks in her confessional. She was like, this house tour is actually shorter than Heather's house tour back in Orange County. <laughs> and now we see the four of them looking at this plot of land that's right on the Pacific Ocean. We find out that this plot of land is about $8 million. And then Heather FaceTimes Terry to let him know about the pricing. And mind you, Heather's architect and realtor are there too. Now, let me just say, I don't think that that was right of Heather to include all of them on looking at houses with her. 
If she wants to look at houses, she needs to do that by herself with her realtors and her architect. Like, I don't understand why they all had to be included in on this. Invite me to your vacation home once it's all built up, but I don't need to be there to look at plots of land with you, especially if we're on a vacation. Heather should have done that by herself, and the rest of the ladies could have been out doing something of their own that they wanted to do. And you could tell that they looked kind of bored being there. So now we flip back over to Noella, Gina, and Emily. They're sitting on the beach just laughing, having a good time. And then all of a sudden, Emily decides that she wants to be messy and she brings up how they took the private jet to Cabo. So Noelle is like, wait, you guys flew private? Really? So Gina's trying to comfort Noella and she's like, you know what, Noella, I'm sure that Heather will invite you back on the private jet going home. So now Noelle is like, well, Heather hasn't mentioned flights to me, so like, I don't really know about that. So here goes Emily being super annoying yet again, and she blurts out, well, honestly, Noella, Heather didn't want you to come on this trip, and Gina had to beg her and talk her into you coming. I was just so annoyed with this scene because Emily is just such a loser, and she had no right to bring any of this up. Girl, shut up and be happy that you're on the private jet. Like, I was just so irritated because, Emily, you have no right to say anything. And I'm like, but Noella, you knew this, though. The fact that everybody knew they were going on this trip at Heather's daughter's book launch party, and you had even said, oh, I guess I'm not invited, you already knew that when Gina called you up that it was a pity invite. So why are you acting so confused and sad now? So Noella goes on to say how she's really hurt hearing all this, and she thought that this trip was an olive branch. Then Noella goes on to add how Heather knows that Noelle is not phased by her and that she can see through Heather's BS. I'm like, girl, please shut up. So now Noella says in her confessional that she doesn't understand why all these ladies are afraid of Heather. I'm like, girl, it's not so much they're afraid of her. It's the fact that you have a one-sided beef with Heather. And for somebody who claims to be so unbothered by Heather, you seem to be awfully pressed when you are excluded from events and trips. Because if I say that I do not care, trust me, I do not care. And I'm not going to be feeling some type of way if I'm not invited to something. So now they change gears in the conversation. And now Gina's asking a whole bunch of questions. She wants to know if Emily has ever had a girl-on-girl -girl encounter. And so Emily admits that she did, I think, back in college. And so Gina's like, oh my gosh, really? Like, did you go down on her? And Emily's like, no, like... It was the other way around. So now Gina is squealing and Noella is giving her a big high five. And I was kind of like, well, that was a very big change in the conversation. How do y'all go from talking about Heather to now asking if Emily has ever had a girl on girl interaction? Now we see a short scene with Dr. Jen and she's working out to manage her leg pain. And so she's on the phone with her husband and she's like, hey, babe, like, I'm working out right now. I had the worst pain. Like, my leg will not stop hurting. And she's like, you know, I need some encouraging words. So her husband says to her, I mean, you know, get better soon. I hope you feel good. Like, that's all I got. So now Dr. Jen is getting upset. Like, you know, I really need you to just comfort me. Like, I'm really going through it. So Dr. Jen says in her confessional that she wishes that her husband would show some more empathy and how she really wants to feel like she's loved. Like I said to y'all when this season first started, I already could feel the tension between her and her husband. Also, the minute that she said that she was the breadwinner and he was staying at home, I was like, okay, I'm not trying to be judgmental. But what I am saying, I personally feel like Role reversal, for the most part, doesn't seem to work. It just seems like there are always issues when the woman is the one making all the money and the man is not. Look at Wendy Williams, Sherry Shepard, Jill Scott, Mary J. Blige, Kelly Clarkson. She has to pay that fool 
I think, what, $200,000 a month in spousal support? A mess. But I've noticed that her husband is always making snide remarks. She is always pushing him to say I love you to her and be affectionate. And it just seems like he's not that into her. It seems like she's the one who is way more into him. Her husband just seems like a weirdo. Like there's really no other way to put it. It just seems like he just gets off on giving his wife a hard time. And again, I don't see the love or the chemistry on his part. I will not be surprised if they're filing for divorce by the time this season is over. Now we move on to the next scene and it's their last night in Cabo. And a quick side note, when they said the last night, I was like, y'all just got here. Y'all must have been there for two days. I mean, this really was a short weekend trip. So they finished their tequila tasting. And when I tell you that I am all for tequila tastings, besides champagne, tequila is another favorite of mine. There is just nothing like a good margarita, especially a frozen one. Ooh, with some sugar on the rim. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> The ladies sit down for dinner, and now the incident at the sweat lodge gets brought up. Dr. Jen says that she's not surprised about Noella passing out because she's in a poor mental state along with the fact that she didn't eat the night before and she was drinking a whole lot, so it's not a surprise to her. So we see all the ladies talking amongst themselves. Gina and Emily go to the restroom, and Dr. Jen tells Heather that she had a nervous breakdown while she was working out because she can't seem to get validation from her husband. So Heather's giving Dr. Jen some advice and she's like, you know what, Jen, you need to tell your husband what you need. I'm like, Heather, you're saying some great advice, but this advice isn't gonna work because Dr. Jen's husband does not care. So of course it wouldn't be a dinner if things didn't go left out of nowhere. Shannon frantically gets up to use the restroom and now Noella and Heather start going back and forth. So Heather's like, you know what, girl? I wish you the best. I really do. Like, just stop speaking to me because it's obvious that you just want to find fault in whatever I say. So now Noella says to Heather, well, I know that you invited me on this trip as a pity invite. So Heather says, no, that's not true. The real reason why I didn't want to invite you on this trip is because you gave my daughter pornography as a gift. So Noella's like, girl, what are you talking about? I bought these cards off of Amazon. Like I didn't get her porn. So Heather's like, girl, I just can't with you. Like to shut up, leave me alone. So now Heather turns to Gina and she's like, Gina, I told you, I don't want to deal with this on this trip. Like I don't want to talk about this. So now Noella turns to Gina and she's like, wait, you knew? And Gina's like, yeah, I mean, she told me at her house the other day that you had gotten her daughter some porn as a gift. So Heather says, look, we all have different levels of what's inappropriate. Just say that you're sorry and that you didn't know what was on the cards and let's be done with it. So now Noella says that Heather's straight fragility is showing. So Heather's like, girl, excuse me, like what? So of course, here goes Noella. And she's like, I'm a biracial, bisexual, liberal woman living in Orange County. Don't you dare tell me anything. So Heather says, girl, don't you dare try to weaponize your identity to make me look like I'm intolerant. So now Heather says, you know what? Since you want to play this game, let's go. Let me read you what the cards say. So she's reading the cards out loud. And one is, you know, I want to eat your this. I want to, you know, eat that. Suck this up and down. You know, you know what those cards are saying. So Noella is listening to Heather read the cards. And even Noella is in shock at what the cards say. So she's like, wait, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, that is actually wildly inappropriate for a 17 year old. So Heather finishes reading off the cards and then she says, look, you need to be more careful when it comes to buying things for a minor. And then she says, I have four kids of different sexual orientations, so please don't use any card with me. Like that's not gonna fly. So now Noella keeps repeating that she's a bisexual woman and Heather says, I get that, I understand that, I hear you. However, please be careful when buying a gift for one of my children who are still minors. So of course, Noella keeps cutting Heather off and then that's where the episode ends. 
Now, let me just say this regarding the whole card situation. I understand that Noella had no idea what those cards said. I get it, okay? Heather had every right to feel how she felt about her child receiving the cards. Whether or not Noella feels like she was blowing it out of proportion, that's not really the point. The point is, all you needed to say was, Heather, I had no idea what those cards said. I thought it was an innocent card game. My bad. I'm sorry. Please don't take offense. And I didn't mean anything by it. That's all she had to say. And Heather would have forgiven her and be like, okay, cool. But to keep arguing with Heather, not take ownership, and then have the nerve to weaponize your identity and try to spin the conversation into something else, that wasn't cool. And I'm not negating Noella's experience living in the OC as a biracial person, because I'm sure she does experience some sort of prejudice and racism. However, this situation is not that, okay? This was a clear, Noella should have made sure those cards were appropriate for Heather's daughter. And for everybody defending Noella and her behavior, I just wanna quickly point out that Heather did not have a problem with Noella. She was very sweet to Noella from jump. Very comforting, bought Noella a gift when the news came out about Noella's divorce. So I'm really not understanding why folks keep saying that Noella's in the right for how she's acting towards Heather. This is a very one-sided beef on Noella's side. Heather did not start with Noella. Noella started with Heather. But y'all, that was the episode. Thank you all for watching my recap. And as always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.